I didn't grow up a natural singer. I worked really hard at it. People who might be listening to this who are unsure about singing but want to sing, it's like you could start with your choir. You, you don't have to be like solo singing. Being around people and singing around people actually has a chemical release that is healing. I want to move on and talk to about how talk to you about how that experience early on in your career laid the foundation for the next chapter. So mm -hmm. what did you learn? What did you take away? And what did you decide to do after uh, the Bowie experience? Well, that's a, gr a great question. I think that when you come out of a major label dropping <laughs> and then you go on the road with a, a legend like that and then everyone wants to ask you about the, that experience, right? Even today, right? Um, I, for a long time, I think subconsciously felt a little bit sad that I wasn't really like, you know, oh, everyone wants to ask about Bowie, right? So in a weird way, I kind of think there was a little bit of settling through my, you know, 30s. I, you know, I got married and life changed so much, right? And moved out here. Um, Closer to home, obviously, because yeah, we were in St. Mary's, right? So. Closer to home with an eye to have children, so we're closer to our families, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, I was married for 12 years, and then it fell apart in 2016, and two years of just sort of wandering around aimlessly <laughs> ensued. I laugh now, but it was pretty hard at the time. And then in 2018, they announced, um, and this is two years after Bowie died, 2016 was not a good year. <laughs> <laughs> but in 2018, they announced they're releasing that Glastonbury concert that you just asked about. And I, I had to watch it. And I don't know how many people kind of get that chance to, like you're in your 40s, you get to see yourself in your 20s. And it was less about being with David and more about like the energy. That's Holly and M on vocals only. of where I was at in my life. I got to see that energy really coming off the stage. And um, I just kind of compared it to where I was at and I was like, you know what, this is really strange. I worked so hard to have a voice that you know I could sing my own songs with or I could you know play with other people with, but I never really like took it took the time to be thankful for it. Right? Yeah, it was a blessing in your career, really, wasn't it? Yeah, and I, I didn't grow up a natural singer. I worked really hard at it. So seeing that concert was really formative for me because it made me think, oh, the voice, you know, like, not the show, the voice, yeah. the human voice. Um, and I started to write a, a book about it. Yeah, that book is called The Healing Power of Singing. And uh, I talked at the beginning about discovering your inner voice that you say in the book that anyone... Uh, can be a singer, except for me, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I'm in the talking business, I not in the it. singing business. We but must why do hear you sing in yeah, this right. podcast. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, you'd have to work with me for weeks. But <laughs> tell me why you say that everybody has the potential to be a singer, to express their inner voice. Well, I mean, there's two things. There's your inner voice, which is sort of your emotional take on things right your your stamp that comes through what you do and then there's your actual physical voice which it's really just physical you know like if you learn the way to project and to breathe and to bring that voice forward you can sing and uh it's really just a set of steps right but i think the fact that we have to deal with a sound that comes out of our body really puts people off from going for it or exploring. Or lack you know? confidence. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you describe in, in your book uh, that when you first heard your voice uh, playing back, it was like, it sounded like it was trapped in an elephant's anus. <laughs> it's a bit harsh, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I didn't really know how to bring my voice it was very breathy like if anyone you can hear actually my singing from like the late 90s it wasn't bad like this is what I'm trying to get across to people it's like plenty of people liked it and it wasn't 
at the top of its game, right? Um, and I think just over time, I worked with a really great vocal coach to get it out. But I also think like as you grow as a person, you have that confidence to get that breath moving and get your voice out there, whether you're speaking or singing, you know. You talk. You call the book the healing power of singer singing. So you're helping people understand and helping them discover their own voice, but you're also describing in the book how it has helped you heal during various points in yes. your life and career. Can you sort of intersect those two and explain explain that journey? Yeah, well, I could give you an example. I mean, after my divorce, I had to sing in a play called uh, Joni Mitchell River, which was at the Grand Theater. Um, and, you know, I was in no mood or state to A, be around new people, uh, B, be on stage, uh, and C, sing Joni Mitchell songs. Um, but just the fact that I had signed up for it, I was already committed to do it. Um, I literally had to spend every day just like pushing that air out. And not only that, like in order to be in some kind of a state to sing, um, and I was in a bad state. In order to be in a state to sing, I had to actually be somewhat physically healthy. So I had to go to the gym and get on the treadmill and all of that, right? So I think that singing demands us to sort of rise up a little bit, right? Um, and people who might be listening to this who are unsure about singing but want to sing, it's like you could start with your choir. You could join a choir. You could... You don't have to be like solo singing, right? Um, and I think that also being around people and singing around people actually has a chemical release that is healing. I was going to ask you about that. What is the therapy or the release that people get, whether they're famous or singing in a choir? What, what do people, what, how does it help people with their, with their struggles or whatever when they release their inner voice? Well, there's uh, <clears throat> serotonin uh, in there, dopamine, all these things kind of coming together when you use your breath and use music together. I mean, I think there's something even that, that I couldn't explain in the book that happens when you make music that is like just makes you so happy. Um, and maybe happy is the wrong word, like just kind of make like awakens you and makes you feel alive and I, it may come down to the breath you know like in order to sing um properly or with any sort of projection you need to sing from your diaphragm which is the place you know that kind of deep belly breathing that everyone knows is the the breathing that gets you through the fearful fearful moments relaxes you when you're freaking out like all of that mm -hmm. 